so it's it's 6 30 in the morning and i've just finished recording a piano book which is exciting i'm about to go on an adventure and usually when i do this i do a kind of pithy monologue with all of those kind of jump cuts and that kind of stuff and i thought this time why don't i just do a standard vlog you know this is meant to be about my life as a willy someone who works in london lives in edinburgh and someone who travels a lot right was hell. <laughs> I got the one of the X's of doom, which meant an hour in immigration. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Home, away from home. God, I'm absolutely fucked. Proud to see that the uh, team has released LCO textures today. I'm so totally proud of them. I'm feeling really quite awful, really so tired, and I really suffer from agoraphobic panic attacks when I feel like this. So I need to equip myself with tweed armor and a pair of these. Right, so Paul and I are on our way to Anaheim for Nam, which I, I personally dread and get excited about. In equal, equal, equal what yeah. is because not everyone's been to Nam, not not anyone people may not have also been to a kind of music conference. What no. what actually is it? Well, this is the funny thing, it's kind of it's really business to business, and right. so the people who um, attend will either be business or guests of business. So it's not open to the public, it's not open to the public. I mean, there are a huge number of, of very eminent musicians who go, but they all go as guests of, of right. The it's the National Association of Music manufacturers. And it is enormous, isn't it? It's, it's the biggest. So the January one, which is obviously the one that we're going to at the moment, is the biggest uh, trade, mm -hmm. music trade, music tech. Well, see, I say music tech, it covers literally everything. I mean, it's the pianos. Luthiers and, yeah, and violins. Violins and, and, um, and guitars, drums, tech. There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's vast. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm also doing a summer one, I think that's in Nashville. Yeah. Right, um, but uh, but this is the January one is, is the big one. And because of its position in California, you get a lot of the kind of Asian manufacturers and stuff like yes. that. It's kind of the it's kind of middle, the middle of the world for. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's that, um, and that's part of the business the business element is you get um, OEM manufacturers, I think they're called, and um, whether that might be a violin, guitar, right. uh, a keyboard. There are a lot of manufacturers um, who who will make the stuff for mm -hmm. you, um, and. In, to your design and spec and so I think there are a lot of um, those kind of connections that happen mm -hmm. as well. So as a composer what's your interest in going to NAMM before we get on to being a founder of a tech company? <laughs> Just see new toys. Yeah it is isn't it? Inspiration yeah. Yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's always costly NAMM. Like, we had a really big stand a few years back you know we don't have a big we don't actually have any tech out or anything like that. No. Why, why is that? Because we found it was great uh, to have the, the big stand and, and it was fun. Um, but it was very, very hard to give talks. It was very hard for people to listen, to hear stuff. Yeah. Walking into most of the halls is like being physically assaulted. Sonically. And sonically. It's quite overwhelming when you first walk in and it's just not the environment to hear stuff. But also we were opposite, opposite a scratch DJ. <laughs> yeah, thing last, last <laughs> 15 time. minutes. So, so what is the point of us being at NAM and our stand and us and you and I going? It's just to say hi to people and to connect with people. It's great for the team to interact. You know, we try and do as much interaction with um, the people who use our stuff as right. possible because it's really incredibly valuable yep. to get that kind of uh, feedback and you know people can tell you the kind of stuff that they like. And, and it's just fun to to meet. You know, um, and a few collaborations have opened up, like yeah. Eric Whitaker. We met. Yes. and discussed his project at NAM. Yeah. And for example, last night, there were a couple of people who were basically in town for NAM. So yeah. it's it's just good to be in Los Angeles at this time. Exactly. Yeah. We're all badged up. Except to pass. Hey! The noise begins. Hey! So this is the convention center. You'll get a sense of how enormous this is. There's loads of kind of live bands playing. This is pretty nuts. Look at the this out. Uh, oh, it's well over 100,000. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? 
no, 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 no. This is just the foyer. We're not. The, basically, that's where the noise is. Last night with the team, uh, had a few margaritas, a little bit of Mexican food, uh, but that was only about four hours ago, because it's uh, six o'clock in the morning. Back in Santa Monica, heading back to Anaheim. It's kind of weird, I'm home alone at Nam. It's only quarter past seven, um, so no one's here yet. Uh, not even the Spitfires, but just got this, uh, Quite important chap who's been giving me advice about uh, YouTube. So I'm going to go and meet him. Well, that was um, spiritual, I would say. It's uh, one of the great pleasures of both Spitfire and this channel is uh, the number of new friends that I've made and met. And I believe I've made a fantastic friend, a real massive YouTuber. He's going to come to London and hang out with us at Spitfire. He's given me all sorts of fantastic advice. You'll notice that I dropped the kind of serial numbers from the channel. He very politely said, you know, Christian, not many people are looking for hashtag 139. So you might want to put, put in some words that people may actually be looking for on YouTube. Great meet. Back to Santa Monica. I'm going to have a boozy lunch with Will, our CEO. So this is Will, who you've met before, who's the CEO of Spitfire. There's all these phrases like Namthrax, people getting ill and all that. What is Nam to you? Because you've been in the industry for ages. And and then how was this year's NAM? Yes, yeah, so I think this is my, uh, maybe my tenth NAM. Mm -hmm. And NAM is this crazy concoction of all of the people in our industry from not just the, the music tech companies like ours that make products, but also all of the fanboys and fangirls. So the people that love the guitars, love the guitar strings, love the yeah. synths. So there's a load of funny stuff I could say. Have you ever heard of NAM bingo? <laughs> no. So, <laughs> so N Nam Bingo is a game that uh, a lot of companies play and the idea is that there's, there's a number of stereotypes that you see at Nam, and so you get people that have to stand on the booths for eight hours a day, four days in the week, where they write a list of all the, these characters and these are people like the balding ponytail is a classic <laughs> one, the PVC clad over 60 year old. Lots of hair dye isn't there, lots of there's the yeah, people clinging on for dear life. Um, so that, that's the big thing about NAM. It's a mix of, I guess, a quarter of a million people, maybe 100,000 to wow. 200,000, I guess, flooding this one convention centre. For me, that's quite a celebration. It's a bit like a, the people of our worlds travelling to their mecca. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about the leather and all this. It's actually people feeling comfortable to kind of express... These are not, these are not rock stars. No, no. These are people just expressing themselves as part of this sorority and fraternity, I exactly, guess. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a kind of anything goes, let's all share our love for music and music tech. Um, and for me, it's hugely inspiring. But there's also a massive B2B thing, isn't there? Yeah. One business talking to another exactly, business. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, to be candid as well, there's the butt sniffing, um, which is <laughs> which is one business sniffing the butt of another business. Yeah. There's a little bit of 
oh, how are you guys getting on? And what, what yeah. products are you making? And how, how big are you now? And yeah. because it's such a lovely industry, that's, it's a, nice, it's a yeah. nice thing to be part of. Well, it's good to know that Oscar would do really well in NAMM. The NAMM show is uh, it's a lot of things. It's, it's really noisy. It can be costly. You know, you see all of this kind of gear that you want to get when you get back home. But most importantly, it's, uh, it's an amazing validation uh, for this incredible journey that is um, Spitfire. It's such an unexpected thing for Paul and I. And it's our opportunity to meet so many of our friends over here in the States. You know, it's our biggest territory. It wasn't four years ago, but it's become our biggest territory. And I guess the take home for this NAM, as it was last year and the year before, well, I wasn't here last year because of my bronchitis, is very much to kind of keep on doing what we're doing. I think when we first came to NAM four years ago, you know, there was, it was clear that there was stuff that we needed to do. People were coming up and going, we like your stuff, but this year's NAM has pretty, pretty much been like universally positive. Keep on doing what we're doing. Keep on being kind of true to ourselves, being true to you. Keep on giving, you know, the content, all of this kind of stuff. And I guess for me, yeah, it's tiring uh, coming all the way over to LA from Scotland. Yeah, I've not slept for more than two or three hours a night. Yeah, I'm jet lagged still and I haven't, you know, been to the gym, I haven't looked after myself, I haven't been able to walk my dog. But for me, it's a kind of, it's enough of a validation to really motivate me to keep going the year round, not just with Spitfire, but particularly with this YouTube channel. But, you know, truly, from, from the bottom of my heart, you know, thanks so much for coming to visit. Thanks so much for your continued your support and enthusiasm for what it is we do. And thanks for letting me and us know when we don't get things right. You know, it, we can only do what you want us to do with your help. You know, we're not arrogant in that respect. Anyway, I'm waffling and um, you're coming with me back to Scotland. Eight o'clock Sunday night. And um, in a minute, just gonna get on the plane, arrive back in London at three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, go back to Edinburgh at five, arrive home at seven, and I think in total, for the four days that I've been here, I've had a total of, I would say, no more than 12 hours sleep. And as always, I've had to buy some kind of toys for kids and present for the wife, and uh, so I always kind of go home with more luggage than I came with, particularly this large pig. Good kip, slept pretty much all the way. Um, I watched one film, Deliverance. If you haven't seen Deliverance, it's absolutely amazing. It's dated really, really well. 20 minutes to land, we in Heathrow, and then this is when it becomes agonizing because I just want to be home at this point. But we've still got the sector getting to Edinburgh. Right, two hour layover. <laughs> home. And that's it. It's as if I never went away, to be honest. A suitably Scottish drich day is their term for this kind of weather. I don't think it's a description of the weather, it's more a description of how it makes you feel. Drich, it's actually trying to snow today. And Oscar, he has this little thing that he does when I go away. He kind of holds his poo in for the entire duration of my excursions. So this morning, Oscar laid out proudly a little prize for me on the pavement that was the size and shape of a wet heron. Anyway, it's been an extraordinary week and I thank you for coming along with me. My takeaway tips from Nam for gear, hot gear this year. Sorry if the lens is a bit grubby, it's just kind of filthy weather. Um, just keep an eye on Game Changer Audio because they're doing just that. They're four absolutely mental Latvian kids, basically. Uh, they made that plus pedal, the audio sustain pedal that I demonstrated in this video above there. And they've got this new rack unit, it's a distortion unit, and it distorts your signal by turning it into lightning. It's based on their plasma pedal technology, which I believe they also licensed to Erica Synth for system kind of 500 euro rack module. The other juicy bit of kit that I saw was the UAD Ox, I think it was called. And UAD is a company I like a lot. I think they do uh, things really well. They kind of have a boutique spirit, even though they're a massive company now. Thanks as always for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already because the 200th episode is coming up very soon where we'll announce some lucky competition winners. If you'd like to be notified the next time I put a video up, just ding that bell and um, see you next time.